Gizmos and Unity are icons and controls that both help us debug our games and they help us set up our games. And Unity provides us with a number of gizmos out of the box. So in this sample scene, which is just um, the one that Unity provides for us, the 2D game kit, you'll see a number of icons associated with audio, associated with particle systems. And if we go into the scene and we start selecting objects, we'll see a lot more gizmos, some of which are editable by us. And Unity has a number of different ways to work with gizmos. So for instance, if you're creating your own character controller, say, like we have here, you can define your own gizmos via code that helps you debug all kinds of things. And there are various videos on YouTube that already talk about that. So what I want to talk about here today is sort of the built-in gizmo system that Unity provides for us. The way that we can toggle all these on and off, change their size, assign our own gizmos to our own uh, scripts, and, and so on and so forth. And so we're going to start with this top right gizmos menu, and you'll find this both in the scene view and the game view. By default, it's off in the game view, and by default, it's on in the scene view, but it can always be toggled. And as you see, if we start to select everything and turn our gizmos on, it becomes almost an unintelligible mess. So sometimes it can be useful to have the gizmos off. If we focus on this gizmos menu, what you'll see is that every behavior, basically every component in our game has an associated set of gizmos, or rather gizmo controls, and they can be turned on and off. And there's two columns here. The first one is an icon and the second one is gizmo. And what that means, let's take audio sources, for example. So you can see that we have two audio sources already. If I toggle this first thing, this toggles the actual view of the icon. Now, if I were to select one of these audio sources, um, we're going to see that there is an associated widget. There's an associated gizmo that lets us set the minimum and maximum distances for volume. And if I go under the gizmos and I toggle the right side of the audio source, that toggles that on and off. So we can toggle the icon and the associated gizmo separately for everything. So down at the bottom, you'll see all of the things that Unity provides for us. And up at the top, you'll see all of our user created scripts. Additionally, for icons, we can choose the size of the icon. And we have this 3D option. This doesn't mean 3D games versus 2D games. This means as you zoom in, what happens? So as you'll see, by default, if I zoom in, my icons get bigger and bigger, or smaller and smaller as I zoom out. If I set my icons to 2D instead of 3D, they stay a consistent size, which can be great if your icons are starting to cover up information that you need as you're developing your game. In 3D mode, you can also set a relative size, basically a multiplier. Uh, we have selection outline and selection wire. Um, these will show outlines and wires for objects that you have selected, um, and things like the selection wire are typically going to be for your 3D models, so not as much used in our particular case here in our example. Um, additionally, you can go through and you can assign gizmos to your own scripts that you create. So, for instance, if we take a look at our Ellen character and we open her up, um, that we have a number of, of components assigned and we have something called damageable. And what if we wanted to be able to quickly identify all of the damageable objects in our scene? What we need to do is we need to find our damageable script. So this is something that we apply to our asset in our project. Uh, we don't apply it through the inspector in our scene. Uh, and we want to grab our damageable.cs. And if you scroll up to the top, you'll see that there's actually a drop down on the icon next to our script. And if you select that, this brings up a little submenu of helpful gizmos. So what we can do is these top gizmos will actually have the name of our script. So for instance, if I were to select this one, and then I were to deselect Ellen, then you can now see that there is a little Ellen in red. And if I flip over to say zone two or zone three, and I were to start looking around, I'm going to immediately see all of my other damageable items, which is great. And if this is a little bit too much, we can also just use a basic icon. So for instance, I can choose a circle. Uh, I'm sorry, I can choose a circle or I can choose a diamond shape in any color that makes sense to me. And that will create a little green diamond. Um, now, in this particular case, our green diamond here is hard to see. Um, our green diamond here is actually appearing behind our sound gizmo, so your mileage may vary. Uh, if this doesn't work, let's say that these are, are not the right size or they're just not visible enough, you can actually go through and you can select uh, any icon from any texture in your project. Um, so if I really want to, I could say assign the puff to our damageable. 
and that way I have a little puff in everything in my scene that can be destroyed. And just a reminder that you can also view all of these in the game mode by toggling gizmos. So in this case, what I might want to do um, is I might want to say turn off irrelevant gizmos in my game view and only turn on damageable and only turn on, um, say, colliders so that I can see how my character is interacting with damageable items and when my character is destroying them. And I can use that both to develop my game, but also to debug my game to figure out what's going right and what's going wrong. So in summary, the main way that we interact with Unity's gizmos system, their display of gizmos, is through this dropdown, both in the game view and in the scene view. And there's a number of things that we can set here. And we can also go to our own user-created scripts, and we can define our own gizmos for view in the scene.